Today we are playing Copper Creek. Copper Creek is a town building game. We're gonna build a little western town and we're gonna invest in the shops and make money and points and points is how you win. And this is a game you can print and play yourself at Crab Fragment Labs. I've got four players joining me today. These are cards from uh, Before I Kill You, Mr. Spy. I've got Jessica Beach, Maxine Kelly, and the Invincible Sarno. And uh, we're gonna get the game set up and get started. This deck is full of cards with buildings on them. One or two buildings in six different colors. And six of these cards have gray buildings. These are the municipal buildings that have a high point value but don't make a lot of money. These six cards are gonna start on top. So I mix the deck, I mix the gray cards separately, and I'm gonna put out three of those gray cards to start the map. This is the heart of the city. This is Front Street and this is Main Street, and these invisible empty spaces become the only unbuildable spaces on the board. As we build the town, we can put these cards pretty much anywhere as long as they conform to the same grid, even way over here, as long as we can say how many spaces they are from the main grid. But uh, we cannot build over Front and Main Streets. These are always gonna be open. Everybody starts with $15 of money. We've got tokens to put on the board to represent the things we own. And I've randomly chosen Jessica Beach to take the first turn. Normally you would draw a card at the start of your turn. Jessica doesn't get to draw a card because it's the very first turn of the game. The gray buildings are bigger, they're worth more points, they make less money as we're gonna see. And the other buildings have colors. And every time a colored building is revealed, we're gonna change this calendar. Let's talk about the calendar track. I've got a stone in every colored row on the calendar track. Purple, this building here is purple, here's a green building, and this one is brown, which this is an old calendar and it's uh, orange on this calendar. I promise when you print your own copy, the colors will match up and that's how lazy I am. <laughs> I didn't want to make a new board for this video because you know I'd have to turn my computer on in the morning. All right, this calendar triggers scoring rounds when there are two or more tokens in the second column. That's the 1882 election and that's our first scoring round. When there's three or more tokens in the next column, that's our second scoring round, and then four or more that get to 1884 or beyond. Four or more tokens in the fourth column, that causes our third scoring round, and that's the end of the game. Again, there's just a spot here for every card in the deck, and that's why it goes all the way to five. There's five buildings of each color inside this deck, and the first six cards, the gray building cards, are gonna have one of each color. So we know that we're gonna line up all these tokens here before we start pushing them into the second column. All right, it's Jessica's turn. She skips the draw step, and then she has the option to buy a property. If she makes a purchase, it opens up a buying round for everyone. And if she opens again, we all get to go again. It's really up to Jessica. She might say, I'm buying nothing, in which case nobody gets to buy anything. Or she might buy a thing, and that gives us each one chance. We'll talk about income, and then we'll talk about the price to buy a building. When a building makes money, money comes in from the street, the street is the open space. So this little part of the card is open space. The, the front and main streets are open space. And all of this is unbuilt open space as well. If a person, if a, if a customer can walk from the intersection of front and main streets and come into that door, that door brings in money. So let's take a look at this little one by one brown building that Jessica is going to buy. It has one, two, three open doors and one door that's touching the saloon the open doors bring money into that building, and so it would make $3. It's also gonna push a dollar into the saloon, which we'll talk about when we actually score it. But what we're determining now is the price to buy that building, and that's $3, that's its, its income right now. So Jessica's gonna buy that, that little building, all the little one-by-ones we call outhouses, so she's gonna buy that little brown outhouse for $3 and put her token on it. It covers up the one, but we know the outhouses are all worth one point. That means Maxine can buy something if she likes. Now, the big gray buildings, they have the same pricing scheme. Even though there isn't a gray card, there isn't a card that makes the gray buildings pay money, we still use that one, two, three, four, five, six dollars of putative income in the saloon. It would cost Maxine six dollars to buy that saloon. It's a little risky for her to do that because the saloon isn't gonna make a lot of money. It's only worth points, but she's gonna do that anyway. So six dollars buys the saloon for Maxine and we can put her token there. 
Uh, the Invincible Sarno doesn't really see anything that he wants to buy out there right now. And I'm going to go ahead and buy Haskell's Westkits. That's a $5 investment. One, two, three, four, five open doors bringing in money to Haskell's Westkits. So it pays, it pays five, maybe. We'll see what's changed by the time we actually draw a green card. But right now it has an income of five, and so it cost me five to buy it. So the actions come around to Jessica Beach again. She can buy something else if she wants. But remember, we don't make a lot of money for the first few draws. So she's going to save her money. And that means that all of us are because we don't get to buy something unless she did. And that's the end of Jessica's turn. Maxine starts up. Now we're going to have a regular turn where Maxine gets to draw a card first. And we'll talk about the building rules. This card represents six squares of town. And you can play it anywhere on the map as long as it conforms to that grid pattern. So it could be played here or here or here, as long as there's a specific number of squares separating it from what's already out there. The first six cards though have an extra rule, except when they're put out randomly, the gray buildings have to touch front or main street. So she couldn't, for example, play it like this because the post office needs to touch front street. Uh, where does Maxine want to play this card? Uh, she's going to make my building worse and she's going to make the post office cheaper by butting it up here. Now these two green doors no longer pay me any money. It was probably a little risky for me to buy that building. She's going to put the post office there and now she can buy the post office for just $5 because she's closed off a couple extra of its doors. One, two, three, four, five dollars. Buys Maxine the post office. So after you place the card then we start buying around. Uh, if Maxine buys something we can all buy something. Uh, the Invincible Sarno is now going to say, all right, I, would, I, think, I think he's going to buy the chocolate. So Simon's Chocolates here, that's one, two, three, four dollars of income. So that costs four, pay five and get one and change. I don't think I want to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to pass. And then Jessica, she's also going to pass. I'm going a little quickly so we can start up the game and get some, get some points rolling. It's the Invincible Sarno's turn, and the card that he draws is the Land Office. Uh, I forgot to advance when we drew the Wilson's, I, uh, Wilson's Exotic Oils. I should have moved that yellow token forward, and now we've drawn the red card that's going to move that red token forward. It's always easy to check that the calendar is correct because it's really just a record of the buildings in play. So, yes, we now have every color except blue. One of each has been drawn from the deck, and Sarno needs to play the Land Office someplace where it connects to one of the streets. He cannot play it here because it's overlapping Main Street. He could play it here. Um, what I'm actually looking for is a way for him to shut off a couple of these doors and make the land office cheaper. So he's going to do it like this. If he connects the land office to the sheriff like that, he shuts off two of the land office's doors. The point is he wants to make it cheaper so he can buy it. One, two, three, four, five open doors on the land office now it means Sarno can buy it for five. And that opens up a buying round for all of us. I noticed that he also made the sheriff cheaper. One, two, three, four dollars now buys me the sheriff. So I'm going to buy into the sheriff's office. Jessica Beach knows that a scoring round is coming fairly soon. So she's going to go ahead and spend five dollars to buy Wilson's Exotic Oils. And Maxine, Maxine is going to teach us about buying somebody out. So you can actually buy something that's owned by somebody else. You wind up each with shares in that business. And so, for example, Maxine is going to buy into this outhouse. The price is the usual price plus more to the shareholders who are already there. So it's the point value of the building for each share that isn't yours. This is a one-point building. All the outhouses are worth one point. And it has three open doors still. So that's $3 plus $1. It's going to cost Maxine four dollars to buy that outhouse and the result is that her chip goes on top. What does this mean? It means that all the points for that building go to the top chip. The most recent chip in there gets all the points but any money that goes in there gets divided among those shareholders and the odd money goes to the oldest chips. So if that uh, building made one dollar it would just go to the green chip. If it made two dollars they would each get a dollar and so on. It's Sarno's turn. He could decide to buy something else. He's got $6. He can't buy much. He's going to spend $2 and buy this little red outhouse. And because he made another purchase, he's the active player. That opens up the buying for everyone. 
Now, can I buy that bank? Do I want to buy that bank? I have $6. No, the bank is more than six. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate something else. You can also buy a property that you own, and it seems like a little extra money, but it makes it harder for other people to buy it away from you. If I rebuy the sheriff, the sheriff is one, two, three, four open doors right now, so that would cost me another four. If that share in the sheriff belonged to somebody else, I would be paying the point value as well. I'd be paying $4 on top of that, but that's my share. So I don't have to pay myself. What it means is if someone else wanted to buy the sheriff away from me, they'd, ha they'd now have to pay $4 for each of my shares. So they'd pay an extra eight on top of the doors. That makes it more expensive, more difficult for someone to buy those points away from me. So that's a little bit of insurance. Now it leaves me with very little money and I'm not likely to make a lot of money right now, which we'll see in a minute, but that's my purchase. Uh, let's say Jessica's going to pass and Maxine's out of money, so she's going to pass. The Invincible Sarno could keep going, but he's going to pass too. And now we're going to move on to my turn. I draw the blue card that brings the calendar up to true. And this will be the last uh, card where we don't get to pay anybody. I get to play this hotel, but I only have $2. And so I'm going to play it where it's not touching anything and make it more expensive for someone else to buy. And I'll spend my $2 to buy this little outhouse on the corner. Now, I could also just say I'm not buying anything, and that would mean no one else would get to buy anything either. But uh, I think I'll go ahead and make that purchase. The hotel is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight doors around the outside, eight open doors. Jessica only has $7. Uh, she could buy the bank, but I think she's going to wait for her turn to spend that money. Maxine still has nothing. Sarno has very little, so that's that. Let's move on. Now, here's how paying works. When I draw a, a new card from now on, it's going to have a color that matches buildings on the board. So I've drawn the blue card that happens to match my blue building. First of all, let's advance the calendar. There goes the blue pawn. When I have a second dot in the two column, that'll be our first scoring round. The blue buildings are going to pay. I have two doors of income coming into my blue building, so I get $2 for that. The blue buildings also push money into their neighbors that they are connected to. So with these two doors, this blue building pushes $2 into the hotel. And nobody owns the hotel, so no one gets that money, but that is how the, the paying works. Uh, let's see, where does Jessica want to build this? She's got $7 and this has eight doors. So if she closes off a couple of these doors, she can afford it. She can also help herself out by building up against her own building. Essentially, blue is going to push blue money into the neighboring building and the yellow building is going to push money into its neighbor too. So this changes the color of these doors, but it doesn't lose her any income and it sort of balances her portfolio, if, if you will. She's going to spend one, two, three, four, five, six dollars and buy uh, Lonely Grover's Coffin and Headstone Emporium after building it right next to her very own building. Let's see, Maxine still has no money. The Invincible Sarno doesn't see anything he wants to buy, neither do I, so that's the end of that turn. The turn marker goes to Maxine and she draws. This card has two buildings on it, so we're gonna advance the calendar for both. We're gonna pay both colors. Let's talk through how all that works. First red and then purple. And now we're gonna pause this because we've created a scoring round. And a scoring round is this. Everyone gets the point value for the buildings where they have the top chip. So let's just go through. This outhouse is a one point building and it scores the top chip, that's the yellow chip. So one point for yellow. Maxine also scores the saloon. That's four more points, putting her at five. Let's do this block. Here is, I see two points for red. Here is three more points for yellow. Here is two and two, that's four points for green. This is one point for red. This is one and five, so six points for blue. Here is four points for red. And then right here is two more points for blue. So our scores after the first scoring round, uh, two players tied at eight, then seven, and then green is back here with four. Now let's pay the colors that just got drawn. There's a red building out there and there's a purple building out there. Let's talk about the red first. This outhouse has two open doors. An open door is a door that someone could still walk to from front and main. And as we build this map, this is open space. All the tan parts of the cards are open space, but it could possibly, those doors could be blocked off someday and then they wouldn't make money anymore. 
So that's two dollars that's coming in to the blue player. I'll just pay that. Invincible Sarno gets two dollars. This red building also pushes two dollars into the land office. It has two connected doors with the land office and so that's also Sarno. He's going to get two more dollars because the land office has two red doors. On the purple side of the coin, one, two, three, four dollars is coming into Sarno again. Nice work. And this purple building is pushing two dollars into the sheriff's office. Both those chips are mine, so two dollars goes to me. This is Maxine's card to build. Now she can play it anywhere. The gray buildings had to touch front or main street. The, the, the rest of the buildings for the rest of the game don't have to touch anything. They just have to conform to the grid. So she could play it like this. She could play it here. We could just move the board a little bit. She could play it way over here. Even as far away as you like, as long as it's still part of the same grid pattern. People don't typically play cards super far away, but they do often play them like this to leave an open alley, which means certain buildings don't pay or certain connections never get made or just that these doors will always stay open. Unfortunately, Maxine has no money. And so she's going to play this card here, but she's not going to buy anything, which means none of us get to buy anything. And the turn moves over to the Invincible Sarno. And that's pretty much it. You've seen the whole game. Now, it takes longer to get three tokens into the 1883 column and even longer to get four into the 1884 column. And so the next two scoring rounds are going to be a little farther down the road. Uh, each time they happen, we're going to see who owns the buildings at that moment. And we're going to move our chips along the scoring track to see who wins. Um, a lot of us overinvested in this game, I think a little in the gray buildings. They don't make a lot of money. That means that you're sort of held back in the middle of the game. You don't have enough income to buy more buildings and, and protect your buildings from being bought away from you by other players. Uh, the high point buildings are sort of the gray buildings, and that's why people buy them eventually, because they're worth a lot of points. I like the way the cards sort of form the shape of a town almost organically as you go. Uh, you're going to see bigger and bigger towns and more and more dense uh, competition for these high point buildings in the middle. And that's Copper Creek, a nice simple little game about building a small western town. It's currently available only as a print and play, which means you can make your own copy and collect parts from all the other games you own. You'll need some counters, you'll need some play money, you'll need uh, some little tokens for the board, and also just uh, a, a, a dingus like this to remind you who's the active player. So thanks for watching. That's Copper Creek from Crab Fragment Labs. I'm James Ernest, and I'll see you at the table. Crab Fragment Labs is basically my personal playground. I started this up to do what I love doing, which is to make games, and honestly, I am sick of trying to sell them, so I'm giving them away for free. Almost everything at Crab Fragment Labs is completely free. Games, articles, short fiction, lectures, videos, everything I do, uh, more or less, but I uh, still have to pay rent in my life. And so if you would like to help out, if you like what I'm doing here at Crab Fragment, please join us on Patreon. Give us $5 a month, become a hermit crab, and help us support what we're doing at Crab Fragment Labs. Thanks so much, and I will see you at the table.